Well, ten past three in the morning, a bit smaller than we'd hoped for, well, quite a bit really, but first one of the season anyhow, 15 and a half pound. Not bad looking little fish, a few battle scars, probably been doing a bit of spawning, but there you go. There you go, boy. Go get your dad. Here we go then, quarter past four, same rod again, just recast about 50 baits out, just got back to bed, usual thing, away it goes. Been on for a little while, got it through most of the weed, close in there. Got my old buddy here Clive with the old net to do the honours. Sure he don't mind being waking up, woken up at four o'clock, do you mate? <laughs> Not very big on is it? Another double by the looks of things. Here he comes. Nice and easy, does it? You know what, mate? See him all right? Common, isn't it? Oh. Well done, boy. Yeah? yeah? Hold the rod boy, I'll um, do the old net. The old cuckoo up as well, must have heard the run. The old bowlock landing net. There we go. Yeah, that mid double, I think, Clive. Common as well, make the change. Good nick, anyhow. Yeah. Immaculate, look at that. There's the old hook. Oh, just outside his bottom lip. The old tent bowl lead. Zero the old scales. Zero. Oh, it's lovely to be awake, four o'clock. A nice wet fish on the old bank. Are you right, mate? 16 pounds, something like that. <laughs> See what you reckon. <laughs> Is it? Mm, can't be bad. 88. Mm. Nice. Yeah, lovely. Uh, still waiting for a big one though. Can't believe all these doubles. Not like here. Normally a big one out by now, still. Got to be due a big one now.
Now, well, 18 and a half pound, cracking looking common, isn't it? Put her back. There you go. Well, here we are on the second morning. After them couple of fish early on, two mid doubles, nothing else happened really. Not for me, anyhow. Um, but I've got 12 hours left and me 48 hours, which is Duncan's restriction, so we don't get overfished. Uh, young Glenn down there has just had a really nice fish of over 30 pounds. 31, 5, 6. 31, 5, or 6. Yes, happiest man in the world. Hey? I've done it, I've done it. What a fish. Thirty-one pound five. What a fish. This is what it's all about. Okay. Go on then, I'll get out. Yes! <laughs> nice one, Glenn. Fish of 31 pound, five ounces, a personal best. That's the size of fish we're looking for. We know this fish in here, well over 40 pound. And what I'm going to do while we've got a quiet moment is just show you a few of the rigs we're using to try and put a few on the bank. These fish see a lot of pressure from some very good anglers, so rigs are very important. What I'm going to do is just run through a few that we've been using and trying on this trip. Uh, the first rig we've been using is a small amount of weed on the bottom, so it's important to keep the bait above the weed. What we've got here is some 25 pound silkworm with a little bit of the magna, magma applied to it just so that it'll sink flat on the bottom. When you use these type of soft supple hook clinks with a neutral buoyancy, they tend, as the lead lands, they tend to follow it straight down and land in a heap. And then because of the buoyancy, they end up in a loop like that, which is not very good presentation for the fish. So with the little drops of magna applied to them, as the lead lands, the hook link settles like that. Lays along the bottom following the contours of the lake bed. Now, when the, the lead is tight, and we'd, what we don't want to do is have to pull the lead back through the weed where the hook could possibly pick up on the weed. So what we want is to find a clear area with our marker float, cast to it. As the lead drops, we can leave everything, and we know with the, low, the hook link laying on the bottom that the bait is sitting proud of the weed. So what we actually got on here is a, a big hook, Bent hooks are actually um, not allowed by Dunk, and this isn't actually a bent hook, it's just a large hook. Um, small Drennan ring fixed on there, and a pop-up tied with dental floss. So what will happen is, the rig will go in, and that will sit like that, above the weed. Balance the rig in the water before you cast, obviously, with just applying the amount of heavy metal, so that it will just go down slowly and sit on top of the weed and it should sit like that. As the fish comes along, hopefully, takes the bait like that. If it tries to eject the bait, the bait will get blown back away from the hook, leaving the hook still in the fish's mouth. Now we've been trying that one, and another way what we've did, on the same rig, with slight variation, using the same pop-up, but instead of the, ca the balance weight to sink it, we're just using a bottom bait, tied onto the high eye of the hook. So it actually sits like this in the water. So you've got two baits. It's a good rig, and it's a rig that uh, is used quite a lot when you're just fishing single hook baits, where you're not fishing over a big mass of baits. 
Right, this is a rig we've been using. I've had both the fish on so far. They call it the combi link. You start off with 25 pound silkworm line and apply the Croyston hawser to it, which makes it stiff. This again helps the presentation of the bait over the light weed that's covering the bottom. As the lead drops, the stiffness of the line makes the bait fall away from the lead and lay on top of the weed. The second part of the rig is made from 15 pound. Come on, go. No. Back to the rigs then. Lovely weather. Pouring the rain, just nice. Might bring the old fish on though, perhaps it's what it needs. Right, back to the old combi link. I'd explained about the stiffness of the rig and how it laid across the, the top of the weed. This end of it was is used we use a 15 pound multi-strand, which is very, very supple and hopefully when the fish comes down and mouths a bait it's not going to detect, detect any of the stiffness here. If, any, if you use this and you're a bit worried about the colour of it, it's quite easy to disguise. All you want is the old marker pen. Just lay it down, put the marker pen on the line, pull it straight through and it's a nice black colour. I, personally I don't think the white puts the fish off at all because once it's in the water with the silt and that you can hardly see it anyhow. Right, so that's the other boilie rig we're using. On one of the rods, we're trying the old particles now. Again, using a buoyant bait or a semi-buoyant bait to sit above the weed. What we don't want is the weed masking the hook point when we get a take from the fish. So this one is the old tiger nuts. They still pick up odd fish in here and they're well worth a try, particularly when they're not a lot's happening. What we do on this one, you can use whatever you like as a hook link material. I use a 15 pound merlin, again with a little bit of the magna on it, which just makes it sit on the bottom well. Use two tigers and a small cork ball in the middle. Just test it in the water for buoyancy and it will sit up like that. Then just add a little bit of heavy metal putty to it, just so it will just very, very slowly sink. So when we cast out again, the rig lands, lead lands and the rig follows it down very very slowly just to sit on top of the weed like that. Now what we're doing we're using a spod for baiting up with the particles to a marker. We're putting a marker out and then we're spodding out tigers on top of it in a very tight area and then casting this on top of it. Right that's the old tigers. The other one we haven't actually tried it yet but I'm going to give it a go this afternoon for a couple of hours. Replace the tigers on this one with hemp. It used to, it's always a very good bait, the old hemp, and uh, I particularly like to try it when we're not having a lot of luck with anything else. All I do, just take the tigers off, use the same rig, same hook and set up. Get a small cork ball and then cover it in the bogey, which is a particle fixer. What it is, is a type of glue. So take the cork ball, roll the bogey around it, then you must have dry hemp. It's no good having the soaked and the cooked stuff. And then you just mould the hemp around the cork ball. And you end up with a pop-up, which looks something like that, which is just the small grains of hemp moulded around the cork ball. Same thing again. Fix it with a short hair to the back of the hook. Again, just test it in the margins and uh, balance it with the heavy metal and the, the lead putty so that it just sinks again. Now fished over the top of a bed of hemp, there's a hemp like that, that's a cooked hemp, and then what we'll do is just fish that so it just sits on top of it like that. I'm going to give that a go for a couple of hours this afternoon and see what happens. Okay, well that's a few of the rigs that we're going to use and hopefully try and put a big carp on the bank. Now without further ado, I shall adjourn to my bivvy out of this rain. Well, Alan, we've got about six hours left out of our 48 hour session. Not much has been happening this time of day, so what are we going to do? There's not much chance of catching now, is there, mate? Nah, it's looking grim. There's been nothing jumping since this morning. I reckon our best bet is to call it a quits today. That leave us six hours. We could fish them in the morning when it's been productive. That's when all the fish have been coming, between about three and eight in the morning, isn't it? So we can do that, can we? As long as we come off early. Yeah. And we only complete a total of 48 hours, we're all right, are we? Yeah, I reckon so. OK, well, we're going to have to squeeze in probably somewhere in the morning because the lake's pretty busy now, but it doesn't matter if we fish the same swim, does it? Yeah. 
I suggest we fish hook baits only. I don't know what you think. There's yeah. been a lot of bait gone in. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Everybody that's left has put a lot of bait in. Everybody that's, that's arrived has put a lot of bait in. It's pointless us baiting up yeah. in the morning, isn't it? Just fish light, come out early in the morning, three o'clock, but just the rods and the chairs and get in where we can and see what happens. Great, we'll do that. Right, just want to take a few moments to talk about the bait we've been using on this trip. Um, the lake here at Duncan's sees quite a lot of the old ready-made baits and uh, the fish get caught on them, they respond quite well to them. So that's what we've been using. Uh, ones we've been using are the Kevin Maddox ones. Um, used these in France and had a lot of success on them, particularly on this flavour, the condensed milk ones. So we've been giving them a go here. Um, these are the 15 mils, nice and round and nice and hard and they'll get us as far as we need to fish. Uh, particularly good in these big packs, you get your pop-ups as well, which are very handy for doing your, your sinker and your pop-up, you know, both on the same hook link, so it just go down. And the pop-ups are good enough and hard enough to use on their own, just as a single hook bait. Um, we do use the dips a little bit in the summer, but I tend to stick to them in the winter a lot more, where I'm just fishing single hook baits, but I leave my hook baits to soak in these for a while, and they become very strong and just fish a single hook bait or sometimes just a single strong hook bait along with two or three free offerings but that's the winter time. Okay, that's about it really. Jeez, oh, it's cold. Go on, keep going. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yes! Cool! Bloody hell. Feels a good one. Yeah. Left hand rod. That's where they were jumping. Come on. Oh. I feel it going through the old weed. Oh. Come on, that's it. This way, this way. That's it, come on. Oh, the old line singing in the old wind. Feels more like it, this one. Come to me. Oh, feels a big old lump, this one. again. Oh, I want to come in. Oh. Steady, Alan boy, steady. Come on, baby. Come on. Yes. Come on. more like it. It's got a bit of weed on his head, it's not doing a lot now, thank goodness. Spoke too soon. Come on. Don't be shy. Oh. Kev! Yeah? Got a fish on? 
You got one, mate? Yeah, feels quite a good one. I've had it on a little while. Hang on a sec. Oh, well done. Got a bit of weed on it, I think. This is, <laughs> it feels a good fish. Big old heavy one, like, you know. Let's just get my coat on. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well done, mate. Right, sorry to get you up and all that. Just put that there. Grab the net. Get the net. You all right? Yeah. Don't want me to sink the other line. No, it's all right. It's to the left, left hand rod where they were jumping. Oh, well done. Whew. Don't think it's far out now, actually. Oh, there it is. See it? Yeah. It look a good fish? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I won't go for it yet. No. I'm still not going for it. It's quite deep down there in the margin, isn't it? Yeah, it does look a good fish. <laughs> well done, boy. <laughs> Magic. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a pretty one. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Lovely. If you want to take the rod, I'll get the net. Uh, yeah. Well done, mate. Lovely fish that looks. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Matt's ready. Take that. Top. Cheers, mate. Looks a whacker. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Big one. He deserves it, mate. That's the one we're in looking for, boy. All right. That's the one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Pretty oh, fish, isn't it? It is pretty. Look at that. It's a linear, isn't it? Lovely. Well done, mate. Magic. Right. The rod's on the floor behind you. All right. Get the, the scales. Scale, the scales and that. I'll buy the, my bed, I think. Yeah. Cool. Just in the outside of the lip. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh, well. The old double boil eat. Magic. Right, Ooh, let's see how this goes. The whacker! Whoa. Yeah, nice yeah, one. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Look at that. Linear almost. Got a little nick there in his tail. That's done that with the old line perhaps. With yeah. Him spawning. I'll just. Can you check those for us? I'll zero them. Just make sure you're happy with them. Yeah. All right, boy. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Oh, well. The harder work, you more, the more rewards, mate. Well, that's it. It's worth packing up and starting again in the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Well done. Whew. Well done, mate. Yeah. He's a nice one, boy. All right. What do you reckon? How big? Up to 20, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Might do the old 3 -oh, you never know. I'm not letting you see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be pleased. Let's yeah. turn it round for you. Is it? Yeah. Can you see it? Feels dirty. Magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is it, mate? 31 6. 31 6. 31 6. Magic. Yeah, you happy with that? Well done, boy. Oh, you, you, you won these congratulations. Are you, you happy with that weight, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's get the old camera, boy. <laughs> More like it. All right, I'll go and get the camera, yeah. Yes. Wacker. Uh, lovely. Lovely. Uh, Beauty. Alright. Yeah. Don't get the rods on the floor behind yeah, you. Yeah, right, boy. Shame about his old scale there, but it's cracking looking fish, isn't it? What that one? Lovely colour, yeah. yeah. It's an old. I think it's an old, old wound, isn't is it? it? Lions just called it again. Shame, isn't it? Right. Flash is ready. <sighs> oh, yeah. Feels a lump and all. Oh, that's lovely. Well done. 
I thought it was we did it. Went all sort of slow for a while and I just cut it off. Oh. So you're cold. Uh, did you have it on long? Didn't know if it could be another double right. <laughs> right, here we go. You ready? Hang on. Give it a kick. Feel him go. All right, boy. Here we go. Yep. I'll move my head then. I don't like this angle, Alan. I'll just turn you around this way a little bit. All right, mate. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Just turn the head. That's it, lovely. You ready? Yeah, all right. Gave it yourself, innit? Just wait a sec for the flash to charge up, all right? Yeah. That's sure a pretty fish, mate. Linear, innit? Come on, flash. Charge up. I bet your arms are aching, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I'm awesome. <laughs> That's a punishment for catching a whacker. Behaving yourself now. Right. I'm focused. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Right, just one more quick one, mate. Just hang on. Getting back then. Don't All be right. moaning the photos are no good. Here we go. <laughs> ready? Yeah, got it. Lovely. All right. Yep. Yeah. Well done, mate. I think that calls for a cup of tea, that. Be nice. I'll put the kettle on. There we go, get the old boy back. Yeah. I told you them old trolls would work, boy. <laughs> cool, the old water's a bit warmer. Yeah. Lovely fish, that, isn't it? Cracking looking thing, isn't it? Yeah. That is a nice fish. I expect it's a bit tired, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Fought well, though. Might be lucky enough to get no one yet. Yeah, you never know. Steer him back. <laughs> there he comes, look at that. Nice, isn't it, in the clear water? It's lovely, doesn't it? Isn't that lovely? Look at that. He's not sure which way to go, look. Sort himself out, isn't he? Lovely shape, isn't it? Yeah. Go on, my boy. Beautiful. Majestic. <laughs> Majestic. You sound like Peter Moore in. <laughs> there, there it goes. goes. Yeah, it's going now. But I expect you're pleased with that, aren't you, mate? Well chuffed, mate. Nice looking Wanker. fish, that. Church Lake, Horton, set in the idyllic and peaceful countryside of rural Berkshire. 13 acres of gin clear water, 20 feet deep and fringed by reeds. Each swim has been individually created and named. In 1978, Church Lake became a commercial trout fishery when all the coarse fish were removed carefully with dynamite. In 1990, Longfield was netted, and its residents, some of which had come from Yeovany, found themselves in a new home here at Horton. 57 carp were introduced, the biggest being Jack, at 42 pound. With few exceptions, the fish have thrived to be loved and cherished by all who fish for them. Some, now over 35 years old, have graced many a front cover with their captures logged forever in the annals of carp history. Tony, I'm in. Yep. First bit of action, we're in. Yep, definitely. That was quite a good fish, actually. Shouldn't say that, never know. Well, yeah, ain't far out. I would have thought he'd, he'd have been up in the water, not to worry it, do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. yeah. It's on the top there. 
don't think it's a big one, but it's a carp. Oh. Autumn carp, hopefully. Common, isn't it? Could have been 48 pound, but it don't look like it's gonna be. No, no, no. But nevertheless, no, yeah. yeah. Any fish from here is a result. Yeah, it's got your old line tone, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Just picked up Tony's line there. Hopefully it shouldn't be no trouble. Long one as well. He's in the net. Well done, mate. Well done, Ali. Magic. Well done, son. Hey. All right, boy. Is it? Yeah. It's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Good luck, Tony. Should pull out now. Is it, boy? You hold him a minute. I'll wet the old stuff. Martin! Des! Go on! Split tail to common, they reckon? Could be about 28, I don't know. Not far out. He's over. He's over. 20. 28. 29. 29. 29. He's waving it like, Is it? Well, what do you reckon? Just tell us if you're happy with it. It's jumping about. It's like. jumping about 28, 15, 29 now. <laughs> it's me shaking, I think, not the scales. <laughs> you want me to get the tripod? If, well, if you like, yeah. It'd be better because it's uh, steady. It's like 28.12. You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Best way. Lovely. Yeah, having a surf nicely. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> Smell that bait. Poor old boy, get some toilet paper, wipe his bum. <laughs> Let it do him, Des. Yeah, we know what that is for. It's got a close, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't like to cut it out, no. Nah, it's best. I mean, it's been, he's had it for years, hasn't he? It's yeah. Not, it's not doing it anymore. Just putting a bit of the old clinic on his tail where he's split. I mean, he's always had it, but it's. Just might do it, it's a bit of good, looks a bit red and raw, doesn't it? Yeah, do you want to turn around the other way? And a bit of like antiseptic. Spare Des. Dr. Decibel at work here. <laughs> Magic. Goes in. Hey? Nah, I'll be alright, mate. Yes! What a blinding start. This is an important enough water for Anglers Mail to have a reporter here virtually full time for the first week of the season. 
Let's hope I can catch a whacker today. Where are you, lumpy? Can you just run us through the rig you're using? Yeah, just to pop up. Yeah. About a 10 inch or 2 inches off the bottom. Yeah. What sort of lead and uh, three ounce lead? Helicopter or? Yeah, helicopter. Yeah. What, what sort of tail are you using between the bait and the, and the lead? Tight to the hook. Yeah. And so on about 10 inches. 10 inches. Yeah. yeah. And did you, did you back lead it or was it no, straight no, out there? No, straight out, tight line. Alright. Okay, what about the line and the hooks you're using? Uh, just 15 pound main line. Yeah. What about hook links? Nothing um, fancy? Uh, Christon, 25 pound. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Right, All right, cheers, Alan. Okay, well, well done. Cheers. Is it hard, Phil? Pleased, I'm pleased about that because that's, that's one of the hard ones. He only comes out once a year, usually. Know? Yeah, he was and he was below me, so I, 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 I had to take him to jump out the tree quick, like. When I said, what was it, I thought it was only, because it, it came in the side and it was right on top, wasn't it? And it just flipped and I, I thought, oh, I thought it was a tench or grass carp or something, yeah. 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 A big 30 that, I think. 37.38, what do you reckon? It's got to be big, I think. 36, I'll say. Yeah, right, it's got to be big. That's probably the best weight. Yeah, I think so. Oh, crack. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Oh, it's a surprise. Not even that. 3312. It's a lot bigger than that. Bit of a cracking fish. Real nice looking one. Don't get caught very often. There he is. There's Dale, the old proud captor, Ed Bailey. Deserves that for all the work he's done at least. Go on, go on. Check a bit of water while I wash it down. Scales out the way now, Dan. Yeah. Might oh, better get around there. Better get around that side, I think. Get around that side. You've got enough room now. See where it gets its name. Shape just like a big arm. Beautiful. Yeah. A lot of people want to catch that one. Cracking looking fish. And Dale was the first one this year. Getting nice and wet. Sunny old day. Don't want it to dry out at all. Both up the tree at the time, the old buzzer went, spotting the fish. Just put some bait out. Dell was at the top, Richard was underneath him, heard the buzzer, come flying down the tree. Dell treading on Richard's head. Richard's got to the rod first, just pulled into it. Dell dropped down, took the rod over. And away it went from there. Caught it just under the rod tip, really. Well, rod length fell, I suppose. There it goes, going back then. So I went. Yeah, it's gone now. Alright mate. There she goes. A couple more photos. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try, but <laughs> I'm not too sure which way the fish is going to go. I think she's getting a bit lively. <laughs> Just to get back home. Get some more bill oilies down here. Yep. 
Oh, mate, it's a 30. Next one will be a 40. What's your knee doing? Put me out. Okay, I'm going to have to put him back, yeah, I think. I should let it go down. Oh, yeah, Somebody's going to get wet. No, not quite. There she goes. Go down, Dale. Go down and take all the rest of it. Go down, Dale, boy. Cheers, mate. Pull us up. Oh. Nice one, Dale. Cheers, mate. Nice to many, I hope. Yeah. yeah. Save the blank of the season anyway. <laughs> Right, just got to show you how to make a few of these very buoyant hook baits. It's very important that they are buoyant, as I've explained already, to make these rigs work. So, get the old egg in the mixing bowl. Measure your flavour very accurately, about 3.7 mil or one good glug. Same again with the oil, very, very important. Two big glugs and a little bit for luck. Right, get out a good old mix up. Don't matter about on these hook baits, if you're using on your normal base mix, um, four mil to, the, to your six eggs mix, what I'd try and do is make these hook baits a bit stronger. So I'll perhaps double up the flavour level. All I'm doing, I'm just going to make one egg's worth for now. Quite often at home, I'll make up a complete mix of six eggs, just for hook baits. All right, so you've got all your liquids in. Just a matter of adding the mix now. This is a really good light pop-up mix that I've come, you know, after a lot of trying and error, come to find as the best mix for uh, making these pop-ups. Just a bit more dry mix. You want it a fairly stiff mix, you don't want it very sloppy. It's a, you're only going to be doing a few hook baits, so... I don't like normally making bait on the bank, I find it's a bit of a chore. I'd rather get together at home with a few mates, and uh, like this year, where we've been putting a bit of bait in, it's three of us fishing on the same bait, um, we made about 60 kilo of bait over a day and a half. That way you get it all out of the way, you've got it in the freezer and you've got plenty of bait for the season then. I'll get you going anyhow. There's quite a few baiting campaigns going in, on in the lake at the minute. There's 10 of the anglers have got together on a bait and they put over 1,200 quids worth of bait already in the lake before the season started. They were up to about 20 pound a day before the off in the, in the season, in the closed season, walking around and they were actually watching the fish taking a bait. Obviously come June the 16th, it's a lot different. But um, you know, it's a lot of money they've spent and uh, they, they think it's worthwhile. We'll have to see whether the results are as good as they think they're going to be. On this type of water, you can't use a good enough uh, bait. You must be on a really good base mix. It's very important that if you're going to fish it regularly, week in, week out, you've got to get a bait in there that the fish are going to use and they know it's going to do them good and they're going to eat lots of it. I've been using, like we've been using, a fish meal bait in here and uh, it's a very good mix. We know it does well on a lot of other waters. And uh, we didn't do any actual pre-baiting, but uh, we decided that during the season, whenever we fish, we'd make sure at least a couple of kilo of bait goes into the water. That's uh, either when we packed up or during the session. And uh, on this seven day uh, session that I'm doing at the moment, I'd expect to use about two kilo of bait a day. Obviously it depends if you've got a lot of fish in your swim and you're having action, you're using more bait. But a lot of the time, you, you might, as I've said before, you might not be getting action over the baits, but you know you might not be getting indication on your rod, but I'm sure they're taking some of them free offerings. So it's important to keep the old uh, swim topped up with boilies. Right, got this about right now, nearly. It's, uh... You don't want it too stiff so it dries out while you're making the bait, but uh, that's going to gradually dry a little bit as I'm doing the baits. That's about how you want it really. I'd normally, if I was making it at home, I would have made it a little bit drier. But um, because it's a nice day and it's going to be out in the sun for a little while while I'm doing them, I'm quite happy with it at that. Right, all you do, is no boiling involved in this. 
you just make up the mix. Like we've just done, just get half a dozen baits or so in there and just keep them turning on top of the thing. They're getting very hot. It's, a, it's like grilling them, but these ones, when they're finished, if you keep them on, if you let them stop still for long, they'll get a burn spot on them. I mean, I'm not too worried about them, but I like them to be about the same all over. So just keep turning them on the heat. This particular mix takes about two, three minutes of this. What you do, you keep going until you can actually hear them and they become hard and they're banging against the side of the, of the um, frying pan. Just keep rotating them. All right, that'll do. That'll do. You can hear them banging around the old pan now. They're quite hard now. Right. Still warm. Right, that'll do. That's a very hard and buoyant pop-up now. Now all I do for tying them on, I don't thread them through with a needle and a hair because all that does is let the moisture get inside the bait in the bait. What we want to do is keep them as buoyant and as as hard as possible. So just using the old dental floss. Just tie up the old floss, lasso the bait. Little dab of the old super glue, just to make sure it don't slip. And what you've got there is a very hard and a very buoyant pop-up. Now we can fish that on any of the rigs that we've already talked about with confidence and that's going to stay popped up and in the position we want it, holding the hook in the vertical position for at least 24 hours and longer if possible. During the winter you sometimes want your baits out, once they're in the right spot you want them out there for sort of 48 hours, but these are the boys to do it. Now another little thing that quite often I try with the old um, hook baits just to try and get a little bit of something extra out of them and also to um, when I've sometimes you'll just fish a single hook bait on its own what I do you can buy these dips already in the shops if that the flavor that you're using all well and good but what I like to do is just get a tub use the old fish oil the flavor you're using and make up your own dip just plenty of oil and again double up the strength for the flavour that you're using. It's only for hook baits, you're not going to do any harm. Make up a little tub of mix, like that, and just leave your baits to soak in there. I mean, I, I leave mine in for sort of weeks on end, like. And what happens, they absorb as much as they're going to absorb, but what you find is you've got a really strong, powerful hook bait. Now, if you're fishing that on, the own, on your own, there's a lot of attractor in there to bring the fish down your hook bait. If you're fishing it above your normal baits, it's a very strong one and you know it may well attract the fish to that bait alone. When you're using these hook baits and they've been soaked in dip, when they actually go in the water, you'll see a very oily film come off of them. And I think this is very attractive for the old carp as well.
some more sun. Yeah. You reckon I was it down? Chris, sir. Yeah, that's it. Nineteen ten. Oh, lovely. Put on a bit there. Yeah. Well done, my son. Cheers, Chris. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Good sweat, these, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, it was under a snag. When that one round there? Well, I don't know. Just down here, and it was kept going through it. I thought it was only attention to this. Well, under the snag. All right. What are we doing? Shall I get my camera? There she goes in, Polly. Let's mirror of the lake. That's a little lot. What a scrap for a little fish. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, that's nice. Be a whacker one day, no doubt. Alright, Alan. What you still? How's it going, boy? Yeah, not bad. It's got even off work again? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, I've got a bit of bad news for you. Poor old Alan. Joking. Yeah, the biggie's been out of Wizzy. No. Yeah, How big? 41 pounds. 41. Look at the condition of it. Brilliant. Yeah, you're having me on. No. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one that ain't been out for, what, about 18 months? Last time we saw that fish was nearly two years ago and it was about 35 and a half then. I can't believe it. Yeah, 41 pounds. Went to Duncan, started there. Had a 30, two 40s out of there. Come down here and now there's been a 40 out with me. Ain't like a bitch. I bet Alan will be choked. Oh. Well, fish a nice bit boy, isn't it, eh? <laughs> yeah, my dad. Yeah, you like that old jack on a floater in a little while, you never know your luck, do you? Well, he's due out, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Could Lovely. be bigger than all. Yeah. Three for you to choose from. Yeah, be nice, <laughs> isn't it, mate?